Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I'm here today to talk to you about the fourth and final of the seasonal releases from the Lockley Distillery. This is Lockley Ploughing Edition, first crop. Um, so the fourth and final, like I say, so this was um, four bottlings that came out to represent the farming year, essentially, with Lockley being a farm-based distillery. Um, so we had sowing, then we had harvest, then we had fallow, and then we have ploughing, which is the last one. And this is a little bit different to the other three. So whereas the other three were different cast types with their um, sort of very cereal feel, cereal heavy flavour profile, this is the first where we have a smoky element coming in here. But they're doing things slightly differently because they don't dry the barley with peat themselves. So before I tell you what it tastes like and how it's a little different to the rest, let me give you some background information about the distillery and then also what's making this stand out compared to the other three. The Lockley Distillery is a conversion of the farm buildings at Lockley Farm, situated eight miles south of Kilmarnock, and at which the world-famous Scottish writer and poet Robert Burns lived and worked from 1777 to 1784. Plans for a distillery by the current owner Neil McGeoch were approved in 2014 and whisky production commenced in August 2018. Malcolm Rennie, who'd previously been distillery manager at the likes of Brookladdy, Ardbeg, Kilhoman and Annandale, initially worked with Neil as a consultant before coming on board full-time to oversee the birth of the whisky. However, he then left to join the rebirth of the Rosebank Distillery in October 2021 and was replaced by John Campbell, who had previously been the distillery manager at Lefroig for 16 years. The distillery is another new whisky venture who are producing a grain-to-glass spirit. They grow their own barley in fields literally over the road and have their own water source. The bottle itself features embossing referencing the tyre tracks that surround the farm as well. Lockley Ploughing Edition is the final of four seasonal releases that represent the farming year, beginning with sowing and running through harvest and fallow before this latest bottling, which aims to be an evocation of the crisp, chilly winter months as fields are ploughed in preparation for sowing seeds in spring. The first smoky expression of Lockley whisky, maturation of the spirit took place entirely in ex isla barrels and peated quarter casks to provide a soft, warming smokiness that will warm the cockles after a hard day's work out in the cold. Peat isn't used to dry the barley for Lockley spirit, so this was the only way John Campbell and the team could introduce some kind of smoky representation in the distillery portfolio. There are 11,000 bottles of Lockley Ploughing Edition available worldwide. No colouring is added and no chill filtration takes place, and it's bottled at 46% ABV. Okay, so this is the tasting bottle. That's an unopened one. Um, the reason that this is open is if you're watching this before March 2023, I haven't yet got a date set, but I have put aside a bottle of everything that Lockley have launched so far. So um, ploughing came out on Burns Night, January 25th of 2023, and the first release came out January 25th, 2022. So as they've released each bottling, I have put one aside and they have fortunately done six, which means I can put a six box of miniatures together for a tasting event. So we will have the first release, we will have our barley, and then we will have the four seasonal releases. And I'm very, very hopeful that John Campbell himself will be able to join, it, uh, join us uh, in an online tasting event. So um, at the time of recording, haven't got a date set yet, but keep an eye on the website, on the events page, um, and then once that goes live, you'll be able to join us. So, John Campbell previously worked at the Freud, um, and when I went back to uh, Patrick, who's their sales manager, lovely guy, um, and he said, you know, we're really excited about ploughing because it's our first um, kind of like smoky expression of it, um, particularly with, with John's history. And it does say, you know, matured in ex isla barrels and peated quarter casks. So I went back to Patrick and said, well, you've got peated quarter casks there and ex isla barrels. It doesn't say where the distillery, uh, you've got the casks from, what distillery you've used. But is it Lefroig, considering that John used to work at Lefroig, and you also mentioned quarter casks. Now, Lefroig quarter cask is one of my favourite bottlings of all time. So, you know, is it Lefroig? And he came back to me going, we are not able to divulge what the distillery is, but there are probably going to be people such as yourself um, who are going to make educated guesses and there is a good chance that quite a few of you are going to be right. So 
I'm putting big money down that these are ex Lafroy casks that they've matured the Lockley spirit in. So not too dissimilar to what um, Filey Bay did with their peated finish. Again, they don't use peat to dry the barley um, because they're making beer. Although, you know, beer with peated malt might work. I'm sure it's been done. Anyway, um, again, they were using Kilhoman casks. To, and now that was a finish, so that was ex bourbon and then finished in ex, um, ex Kilhoman casks. Whereas the suggestion is with this, particularly with all the, the um, uh, literature around it, is that this is fully matured in these ex Isla barrels and uh, peated quarter casks. So, right on the nose, there is a lovely, soft, slightly salty, there's a little touch of sea breeze in there. But it's a lovely, soft, almost sweet smokiness that's in there. Kind of a slight smoked meat feel. A bit stronger than honey roast ham, but not, not quite the sort of big hunk of ham on a barbecue. It's kind of a, a, a ham that's been smoked on a barbecue. Definitely pork. That sort of meat. Smoked on a barbecue. And with like a sweet, almost maple syrup poured over the top of it as it's been cooking. So it's sweet, it's smoky. There's a slight bit of salt in there as well. Lovely, lovely nose. Delicate, soft, soft wafts of smoke. Not overpowering, but there, absolutely there. And then this underlying sweetness, which I, I suspect is that character of the Lock Lee coming through. It's not quite as like you, you it's not quite as though you are being stood in fields of grain like a lot of the other Lockley releases have done. But there's definitely a delicacy under that smoke, which again itself is sweet and soft. What an absolutely lovely nose. Really, really good. Right. Hmm. Oh, God, that's good. Oh, wow. There was a brilliant amalgamation of that malty cereal. There's a hint of Cheerios in there. Cheerios in milk is still there. And the soft, sweet smoke that's on the nose is absolutely on the palate. Maybe slightly dialed up a little bit, but again, this balance between sweet and salt I tell you, it does remind me of, it's not salted caramel, but you can get sweet and salt popcorn. Very much get that feel of, you get a bag of sweet and salted popcorn where, I can't remember who does it, I'm sure we picked up a bag at a supermarket a while back, and you get this, the softness of popcorn. You know, proper pop popcorn, when you chew it and it's sort of slightly soft, you get a sugary sweetness to it, but you also get saltiness coming through to it. But then that kind of wave of smoke that envelops all of that sweet and salt popcorn. Again, smoked meats, Cheerios, barley sugar, light citrus, almost like a charred lemon meringue pie feel. Mm, we're starting to get down that route now. We're starting to get down that. So, Lemon curd on a biscuit base, buttery biscuit base. Um, and then meringue over the top. That's been hit with a blowtorch slightly too much. So you've got that blackened meringue edge giving you that smokiness. But then you've got the creaminess of the meringue. You've got that soft citrus feel. And it's almost like the, the base base buttery biscuit base underneath has been slightly charred underneath as well. So you get these kind of layers of smoke with this soft sweetness coming in as well. It's absolutely phenomenal. This is really, really good. Um, now, if you don't like peated whiskey, this probably isn't going to do it for you. It's quite prominent. It's not intense. It's not, you know, it's not even Kilhoman Bemore level of intensity. It is a, a soft, sweet peat, but it may still be a bit too smoky for some. But if you like smokiness and if you like complexity, there is loads going on in here. This app, this ticks so many boxes for what I like personally. I think this is phenomenal. I think this is easily the best of the four. And don't get me wrong, the other three were really bloody good. 
but I appreciate it's smoky. It's not necessarily for everybody, but they, John and the team have done a fantastic job with this. That's so good. And, and for something still so young, you know, this is their first year. This, this release marks their first year of single malt whiskies being released. From first release to that, this is a year and it, it is getting better and better. It just continues to get better and better. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, I got slightly more of an allocation of the plowing than I did of the previous four releases. Uh, four releases, three releases. Now, what I did for that initial allocation was all the people that had bought the previous bottles, I went back to them and gave them first refusal. And everybody went, yes, we'll have it because we've got the other three, we'll get the set. But I have some bottles still remaining. I did a Burns Night tasting event last week where I took the bottles with me and offered it to the people at the tasting if they wanted to buy it there. And then one person did. So I have some bottles left of the plowing, which I know people are after. But what I'm doing is I'm also doing it in a package deal with the Arbali, which is over here. I should have picked one up. So the plowing edition is uh, $49.99 uh, and the Arbali is $44.99. So that's the Arbali and you can see just the color difference between the two is really quite marked. Um, in fact, what I might do is nip out and get the all the other bottles so you can see them side by side. Um, but uh, the um, our barley is forty four ninety nine. What I'm doing is I have a special package offer, where is if you get a bottle of plowing and you get the bottle of our barley at the same time, I'm knocking the fiver off um, just to make it a nice round number rather than it being ninety four ninety eight or whatever it is. So you'll get a fiver off if you buy both. Um, I'm going to nip out the back and carry on talking because I want to get all the other bottles side by side so you can see the colour difference between them in, in advance of the tasting event. The Arbali's out there already. That's the first release. That's the Harvest Edition. Now, Ben, please do not drop these because this is the only one that you've got left. So, there's Harvest. Let's move the glass out of the way. There's first release. There's Sewing. There's fallow, there is ploughing. I mean, the colour differences between those. Can we see that on there? Yes, look at that. I mean, how impressive is that lined up on a shelf? That is absolutely fantastic. Um, not that easy to see on camera because you've got the bottles behind it, but to go from the likes, well, to go from, this is where I knock them off, sowing to harvest, and then harvest to fallow and then to go i mean this is just crazy that fallow plowing absolutely bonkers but just so so good so tasting event date is to be announced uh, i'm just waiting for the team at lockley to get back to me to confirm what date so keep an eye on the events page if you're watching after march 2023 unfortunately you probably missed it but I do highly recommend, I mean, I recommend all of them. They are an absolutely brilliant distillery, but that, if you like anything smoky, that plowing is something very, very special from what is already proving to be within a year, well, exactly a year, a very, very special distillery that are doing some absolutely fantastic things. So if you are wanting to purchase a plowing with an Arbali, go to www.spiritspecialist.com, uh, search for Lockley, um, the our barley is worth getting on its own. If I'm out, if I'm sold out of the plowing, I would recommend an our barley anyway. Um, and that's me done for this. I'm very excited to see what Lockley come up with over the next year. So let's see what happens. I shall see you at the next video. Cheers.